Let's welcome also to my guest this morning. I'm delighted to welcome Philip Ingram, former senior military intelligence officer. Good morning to you. Good morning. There's nothing happening at the moment. Nothing happening. It's all it, nice, yeah. nice, quiet day. Nice, quiet day. Look, we're going to talk about British politics. Um, of course, we are. Mm. Lots going on. But I do want to talk about October the 7th, mm. first up. And um, I was very critical of the BBC last week um, uh, for some of their coverage. I mean, basically, um, well, if, I, if I do put Radio 4 in the morning, my husband just says, you only do this just like to G yourself up and get angry. I am... Um, bowled over and amazed and horrified and disgusted on a daily basis by their coverage. Um, this morning, on the day where we are marking the, one, the, the first anniversary of the most horrific massacre mm -hmm. of people in our allied country, in the only democracy in the Middle East, when it's not just that 1,200 people, mostly Israelis, were slaughtered, or mostly civilians as well were slaughtered by Hamas fighters and, by the way, some 3,000 guards and civilians who happily joined in uh, the violence. They were tracked down like animals, brutally raped, brutally mutilated, their bodies burnt, children, babies, the elderly, women. There was no discrimination. They were sought after. And some 250 stolen, mm -hmm. taken into Gaza, some already injured, uh, some uh, already raped and brutally mutilated. Um, we know that some 100 uh, are still being held captive. It is thought that two thirds of those may well still be alive. Mm -hmm. A harrowing, harrowing day. The, we've seen the vigil yesterday in Hyde Park in London. We've seen vigils across the world and, of course, taking place uh, in Israel as well, where the families of the hostages, the families of those who lost loved ones, are remembering that horrific day. So I wonder why, I wonder why the BBC and Sky thought that we should be talking about what's going on in Gaza. Because I don't think this is the anniversary today of what's happened in Gaza. It's the anniversary of what happened in Israel. Mm -hmm. And yet their focus has been entirely on Gaza. People say, oh, well, you know, a lot more people have died as a result. They weren't deliberately targeted mm -hmm. in the same way, were they, as, as, as uh, Israelis were targeted. But also, crucially, when you think back to the first anniversary, or even indeed, you know, far later on anniversaries of 9-11, I don't remember everybody, including the BBC, going, let's make today all about the victims in Afghanistan, mm -hmm. the civilians' victims of Afghanistan. I don't remember them even mentioning those in Iraq. I mean, they mentioned in passing this led to these two wars. But the focus has been on the victims. In any other atrocity, the focus is always on the victims and the families, apart from when the victims are Jews, when mm -hmm. the families live in Israel, when suddenly the focus has to be on what's happened in Gaza, and even, outrageously, what's been happening in Lebanon. Yeah. When, when you, the, the, there's, the, it's really, really simple. The reason why there have been attacks in Lebanon recently is after a year of bombing by Hezbollah from Lebanon into Israel, they, Israel have finally said, we're going to take action. What, what do you make of this... This bizarre need that some people in this country, far too many in positions of power, particularly in the media, have to, to twist uh, 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 the, the Israel being the victim into Israel being the perpetrator. I, I, I am saddened beyond ability to describe in the way that the mainstream media outlets, including the BBC, have done. I used to respect their reporting. I yes. used to respect what they did. I'm going to learn I'm, something. I'm, I'm, yeah, they're they're I, going to take a neutral stance. I, 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 I don't anymore. You know, this time a year ago, the Israeli army were not ready for what they've done in Gaza. This time a year ago, um, as the 1,200 were being killed by Hamas, 3,000 Hamas terrorists rampaging through Israel, taking individuals, you know, 251 individuals, back into Gaza. The Gaza civilians, because we can see it in all of the video, were clapping, celebrating, spitting, spitting on, on the bodies, on the yep. bodies um, kicking the individuals that were still alive. You know, these are these innocent individuals. You know, of that 3,000 uh, Hamas terrorists that went in, um, there's about 20,000 Hamas terrorists who terrorised the people, the Palestinian people in Gaza yep. as well. You know, at least 12 of them were from UNRWA. Yeah. You know, the, the, the UN the, the body UN, the supposedly UN body dealing with refugees. They, yeah. they were in actively slaughtering, raping and mutilating mm. women, children and um, yeah. other, other adults on that day. It is the most horrific thing. And I've seen a lot of the head cam footage that's come from the Hamas fighters that were killed in it yeah and well this uh, is it lovely I mean, the stuff online when people are still there are still people disgusting foul ignorant 
horrible human beings on social media um, um, and, and who, who are still claiming, oh, it's a false flag, or, you know, yeah. the Israelis were behind it yeah. and or didn't happen, not true, blah, blah. The, the footage put out by Hamas fighters within minutes and hours of what they did, yeah. Celebrating their actions, this yeah. is, you know, you, 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 should we think so now miraculously we're saying Hamas are liars, even yeah. though apparently we take everything Hamas says as absolute gospel truth. And and, and you know, from having seen all of that and read the detailed descriptions that were taken by medical authorities and everything mm. else as to what happened, people and what people saw. I think Israel has been hugely restrained in in, in its response. And this is the thing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, read... I, 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 I don't think I could have, from no. a personal perspective, hold back. I don't... No, I 100% know I wouldn't have. You're a military man, you understand the full I, atrocity I of war. Back, but, yes, but, I, yeah, no, I, no, yeah. I wouldn't. Oh, no. I mean, uh, trust me, Gaza wouldn't exist if it had been me yeah. in charge. I can take that right now. Um, and, and I think that's what most Brits would think. If this had happened in Britain, yeah. if this had happened in Britain, we the, the, the view would be so different. I just find it extraordinary that um, we're there. Look, we've also seen from a campaign against anti-semitism some stats that have come out today about you know now 10 percent of 18 to 24 year olds in this country hold a favorable view of hamas a favorable well, view now i'm i'm amazed it's not higher actually yeah. i'm amazed it's not higher because of the, the 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 propaganda that these young people are seeing and the fact they get their news from tiktok and not proper news sources like oh, oh i don't know the bbc well oh no wonder so many of them think hamas isn't a terrorist organization i mean the bbc doesn't even think hamas is a terrorist organization I hear them saying, you know, things like, you know, um, Hamas, which is described by some governments as a terrorist organisation. And yet, oh, uh, the Hamas Health Ministry, no, no, the Gaza Health Ministry says 41,000 people have been killed. Sorry, sorry, that's literally a terrorist organisation yeah. that runs that health yeah. ministry. But you take, you take everything they say, absolute mm. truth. But e even, even if um, their figures are accurate, 41,000, mm. and, you know, Israel has come up with a similar... Half of those, similar, but half of um, those would be... 15,000 at least are... Yeah. Um, uh, Hamas fighters, yeah. and that still leaves 5,000 Hamas fighters and, prob and, and more than that. Um, another 10,000 or 15,000 will be Hamas direct supporters, so facilitating what Hamas is doing. So yeah. 30,000 out of the 41,000 are mm. actually Hamas. They're mm. terrorists. They're supporting the terrorists, they're in the terrorist organisation, they're doing it. Yeah. And therefore, that's fewer civilians are killed. In that but, but environment, even if their from a stats were correct, Nevertheless, that was still. It, we are still yeah. looking at the the, uh, the the fewest the fewest number of, of civilians killed per combatant of, the, of any war of, of, of any, any modern war anywhere any, anywhere at yeah. any time. So and, this, I mean, and this shows where the disinformation yeah. has. And, and yet war people. correspondents who apparently seen loads of wars are utterly shocked to see devastated buildings and people dying. And that's not to say we aren't horrified by innocent people dying, and particularly innocent children. But they are dying because of Hamas. Yeah, not there because are of enough, Israel. As, as, and you've yeah. pointed out, Richard, there is enough tunnel space under Gaza to house everybody there. Yeah. They could keep everybody safe. But no, women and children ain't allowed, uh, unless they're Israeli when they're being held captive. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the outrageous thing. I mean, uh, we saw yet another appropriate Palestinian march, um, pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas, blatantly now, march on Saturday. 17 arrests. Um, police now appealing for people to get in touch if they recognise some of these faces of some of you know, quite a few dozen people, um, saying, you know, we, these people weren't arrested the other day. One of the women who's wanted literally was shouting stuff in front of police officers. She's on video mm -hmm. in front of police officers and they didn't arrest her. Yeah, it, it, it's ridiculous. You know, the Met need to get their act together. And you know, pro-Hamas pro and pro-Hezbollah, pro they're all terror organisations. And Hezbollah, who effectively control Hamas, are the biggest criminal organisation in the area. They yeah. um, they run prostitution, child prostitution, and prostitution across the Middle East. Yeah. They're people traffickers. They are money launderers, yeah. and they're the biggest drug suppliers going. Yeah. Yet people feel it's right and proper. Um, you, and we see yeah. Jeremy Corbyn no, himself I think out, out supporting yeah. them. Yeah, but the Jews. Yeah, well. That's, exactly. I mean, let's just call it out for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Call and, out for what it is. And any organisation that wants to see the complete destruction of the of the state of Israel and the murder of every Jew yep. seems to be what these people are supporting. It's disgusting. I know. We Absolutely. cannot allow it on our streets. A Absolutely, it really is. Um, look, uh, coming up in a few moments, we are we are going to be uh, talking to the niece of one of those still being held hostage, and she lost uh, uh, other members of her family as well. Later in the show, we're going to talk to uh, uh, the Israeli ambassador to London as well. Um, first up, though, let's quickly talk about Sue Gray. Um, amazing <laughs> news coming out yesterday after 
afternoon uh, that Sue Gray has been forced out of Starmer's uh, chief of staff. Now, bearing in mind, she left a top civil service job. Um, she, of course, being the woman we got to know as the woman who wrote the ethics report mm -hmm. into the in Partygate. Um, she had been a very controversial figure because while she was investigating Boris Johnson, knowing there's an election, and the next year um, she is busy in talks with Keir Starmer to go and work for him. She was supposed to be literally the grown up in the room. She knows how yeah. government works. She's going to mean that smooth transition, they're going to hit the ground running. I mean, and yet it turns out not very good at politics, judging by it. Also, not very good at getting on with people. I mean, she didn't get on with the cabinet secretary, Simon yeah. Case, although um, he has now outlasted her. He's leaving in the beginning of the new year. I'm glad to see the back of him, uh, whatever mm. reason. He says it's health reasons. Don't care. Awful man. Glad he's gone um, or going. Um, Sue Gray, though, I mean, she couldn't get on with, it would appear, an awful lot of the staff. Doesn't get on with Morgan McSweeney, who's the campaign strategist. He's now taken over that job. She's kicked to the side doing some sort of made up job representing, you know, dealing with the nations and the regions. We don't even know if it's paid. It certainly won't be paid 170 k a year she was on, more than the Prime Minister. Um, this is an absolute humiliation for her, but does this smack, as some were claiming yesterday, that Keir Starmer's taken control, or given that we've not even reached the first 100 days, that they haven't got a clue what they're doing, and this government is genuinely, and this blows my mind, worse than we thought they'd be? Oh, the worse than we thought they'd be. Oh, Keir Starmer, he's tried to sack two people in the past. Um, Andrew Rayner, his deputy, um, she said no, yes. so he had, he had to promote yes. her. Um, and clearly Sue Gray has said, no, you're not sacking me, and he's, he's made up this post that he's, that he's given to her. She was telling people she, this time last week, I ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and therefore it shows the complete disarray that's going on. You know, Harriet Harman this morning was turning around saying, oh, this is just the normal sort of clunkiness that you get with a new government. No, in. no this no. isn't clunkiness chief in any way, shape or form. Chief of using your chief of staff. And, and a chief of staff who lacks the judgment to un, to see where the donate, party political donations will go. All of the and issues that are bearing in mind, go. a lot of the stuff that has dominated the news since July on, yeah. on the party donations, but particularly the last few weeks and during party conference and everything, um, that those donations were taken while she was working for Keir yes, Starmer yeah. in opposition. Oh, so, 100%. And you think, she was an ethics and standards advisor. Yeah. How did she not see yeah. how bad this would look? Yeah. If you, again, there was someone on the radio representing Labour today saying that, you know, Labour are held to a higher account uh, than, than Tories are in government. It's like, that's because you, I mean... By the way, you know, I, I never held, I never held Boris Johnson's, you know, government, you know, to, to like, a, no, really, uh, more than the Labour opposition ever did. Um, but, but I mean, they, they set, they set themselves up for this. Oh, you cool. cannot oh. say we're whiter than white and we're good and they're yeah. bad, and then, and then do the same thing. Um, this is the key thing. I thought that Labour would be competent. Mm -hmm. I mean, ruthless and competent. Um, I just didn't like what I thought they were planning to do. Yeah. I didn't realise I wouldn't like what they were planning to do and they'd be completely incompetent yeah. as well. Well, and, and you know, a chief of staff's role is to coordinate the staff work to make sure it's coordinated yeah. between all the different departments as they come into the Prime Minister. She didn't get on with anyone in the different departments, so she couldn't do that. Yeah. The other most important role of the chief of staff is to act as the conscience for the principal, for the Prime Minister, yeah. to whisper in the ear and say, hey, that just doesn't look, that doesn't pass the sniff test. You just, you take a, a step back before we do this because it might yeah. not be the right time. She clearly didn't yeah. do that. If she didn't all. do that, or she did it, he didn't listen. There's no point having a chief of staff you're not listening yeah. to. And, and, and this, that relationship needs to be totally and utterly honest. It, it, it does. And what, what everything that's happening at the minute is completely undermining Starmer's premiership yeah. and his ability yeah. to be Haven't even got to the budget yet, and yeah. that's going to make everyone happy. Although apparently rumours today that actually the, a lot of their, their sort of tax basically making, you know, ta the taxes on the rich that were supposedly going to give them the money to spend elsewhere, apparently a lot of those are being watered down because they think they're actually not going to work, they're not going to actually raise any money. It's almost like that was a reason why people didn't do them in the first place.